In this video, I'm going to be going through how to modify tables in MySQL using the workbench. And in particular, I'm going to be showing you how to rename tables, copy tables, rename columns, change data types, add columns, add data validation, remove constraints, which is data validation, uh, removing columns, and then finally uh, deleting tables. So for the purpose of this, I made a pretty simple database. Uh, it just has these two tables in it, customers and orders. And uh, I'll make those available on GitHub. And you can find a link for those data files in the description of this video. All right, so with that said, we might as well jump in and see how to do some of this stuff. All right, so I'll start by renaming tables. And this is SQL, so pretty much there's probably more than one way to do everything. All right, so I'm going to start off with a couple examples. How do you rename a table? And the most obvious keyword here is rename, and then it's table, right? So we can rename a database as well. All right, I'm going to rename the customers table, and I'm going to rename it to, all right, clients in this case. Okay, so we get the green check, and uh, let's just take a look at the tables now. Instead of customers, we now have clients. All right, I'm going to switch it back, and most of everything that we're going to do today, uh, we're going to use this alter keyword, and it's going to be alter table. In this case, it's going to be clients, and I'm going to rename. All right, and then I don't need that two here. I just need the rename, get the check mark. All right, and then. There it is, it's customers again. Next up, we'll take a look at copying tables. So again, more than one way of doing this. All right, for copying tables, right, there's probably two ways you'd want to do it. Maybe you just want the structure. So it's going to start with a create, all right, and then a table. And then we just need a new table name. So if I just want the structure, maybe I want something that looks like customers, all right, but it doesn't have the data in there. So I'll call that leads, all right, and then it's just like customers. Okay, and then we can describe our lead table. All right, and we can see if I describe customer, it's going to be the exact same. All right, what if you want not only uh, the structure, but the data? Yes, we can do that. OK, again, it's going to start with a create, and it's going to be a table. All right, and then uh, I'll, again, I'll bring back the client table here. All right, and then instead of like, we're going to use select and star from customers. And instead of like, we're going to use as. OK, and so when I run a select, if I can spell it, select star from clients, OK, we will see a fully populated table. OK, next up, let's uh, rename a column. All right, and to do this, um, once again, I want to start with a describe. All right, and we will describe customers here. OK, so let's say I want to change first name to F name. I want to shorten up the, the column description there. OK, so we'll start with an alter table. OK, we're going to rename here. And then it's a column. All right, and then it's going to be first name. All right, it's not case sensitive. F name. Okay, seems to have worked. And then we can see, okay, yep, the column has been renamed. All right, next up, let's change the data type. All right, so we can see that, um, you know, the first name is a variable character here. All right, the last name is a variable character here. All right, address is text. All right, so text is sort of this really generic data type, all right? And uh, it maybe takes up a lot of space, all right? So let's change that to variable character. Okay, so again, it's an alter table. And now we're gonna modify. All right, so when we modify, we'll take that column name, address, and then we'll just tell it what kind of data type it should be. So variable character, and maybe 25 is good. Just kind of confirm that that has happened. 
There it is. And then you can also change the data type and the column name at once. So let's go alter table again. All right, and that's going to be a change. All right, and we'll change that first name. All right, and I'm going to change it back to the original first name. And I'm also going to change the, the data type a little bit, right? So it's variable character 20. Let's make it variable character 15. All right, I don't know any first names that are 20 characters long. Maybe there are. Let's do it like that. Okay, describe one more time. Name has been renamed. Data type has been modified. Okay, let's take a look at adding columns. All right, so once again, it's going to be an alter table and it's going to be the customer's table. And we're going to add column. Okay, I'm going to give it a name. I'll put the phone number in here, right? And I'll make that variable character 13. Okay, and then we have to tell it where to put it. So I could either tell it to put it first, or in this case, I'm going to tell it to put it after. And then, you know, the last column is email, so I'll tell it to put it after email. Okay, so that seems to have worked. Let me copy this down here so I don't have to keep scrolling up. And let's just kind of confirm it did. So there it is. There's our variable character phone number. Okay, and then uh, let's put some data validation in. Okay, so uh, I'm actually going to put the data validation on the phone number. So you, you can kind of imagine that, oh, maybe you will only allow people to enter numerical data here. So. We're going to alter a table, and it's going to be the customers, and it's going to be add constraint. All right, and the constraint, we can give it a name, and we should give it a name, and I'll show you why in a few minutes. All right, so it's going to be phone check. All right, and that is going to be a check, and then in parentheses, it's going to be phone all right, and then I'm going to use a regular expression here. All right, there's lots of different ways to do this. I'm going to use a regular expression to make sure that only numbers uh, get put in here, right? And so uh, it's going to start with anything zero to nine. All right, and then it's going to go all the way to the end of the line. Okay, so this will only accept numeric input. Try that. All right, and right to really try it, we're going to have to put something in. So we will insert into uh, customers, but let me first see what the data looks like there so I can get a primary key. Okay, so there it is. Okay, so we'll just update Aidenberg here. So update, all right, and uh, we're gonna update customers. And uh, we're gonna set the phone equal to, we'll try to put in some letters. All right, to see how that works. All right, and then, yeah, we're just going to do it where CID equals AB98. Okay, try that. It does not let us do that because we have violated uh, this constraint here. It's got to be 0 through 9. All right, so let me try something else here. Okay, so when I do that, it lets us do it because it's numerical data. And then, yeah, when I select star, we can see that, okay, the data has been updated there. Okay, if we want to modify this constraint to also allow, say, dashes, all right, I could just add this on, right? But I can't add it on right now because it's already an implemented constraint. So first I would have to remove the constraint and then add it back in with the modification. All right, so... Let's see how to remove them. All right, and so this is where that name's going to come in handy, right? So we're going to alter the table here now. All right, and then we are going to drop to remove something, and we're going to drop the check, and then it's that phone check. Okay, so if I do that, Simple as that, it's gone. If I want to try this statement again with some letters, okay, it should let me do it now, and it does. If I want to see it, there it is. Okay, so if we hadn't named our constraint the way I did up here, right, it would have a name, all right, and, and let's just go see what that is. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this name. So put it back in. 
and okay so I can't actually do it yet because I have violated the constraint before I even added it so let me do that first and then all right so I'm going to add a constraint without a name here and then enter and now it's kind of like well how do I drop that right so can I just drop the check and uh, no you can't you have to refer to the name and so how do I find the name all right I'm going to do show create table all right and then it's uh, customers all right and then Yep, I get this long single row result here, and I guess maybe eventually if I stretch it out far enough, I'll see it. All right, it's going to be easier if I just use this form editor view here. All right, so I just clicked on that down arrow. I'll spread things out a little bit, and it's kind of in a more reader-friendly format here. And then, okay, there's the constraint, customers, and look how they named it. Customers, that's the table name, and then check one. All right, so if I add a second validation rule in here, it would be customers check two, unless I name it myself. All right, so it's a pretty good idea to name these yourself, although you don't have to, and then you would be able to come in to the uh, the create table view to see what that constraint is named right the same would be true with a foreign key if you want to drop a foreign key well you need to figure out what the name of the foreign key is first unless you named it going in you're going to have to use this create table to go find the name for that foreign key i'm not going to do it i'll just leave it here right but but we could drop it if we wanted okay so it's just going to be right drop table customers Right, and then it was check, and then one. All right, so when I run that, okay, now I've gotten rid of the database generated name for that data constraint. All right, let's look at a couple more uh, examples of this data validation. All right, and so for, for this next example, uh, I'm going to actually make a table, okay? It's going to have a couple columns in it, right? An ID. I will put a price, all right, and for price, yep, I'm going to make that an integer, and I am going to uh, add a constraint here, all right, and to do that, when you're making a table, it's just going to be a check, and then in parentheses, right, we'll say price, and yeah, we'll say it has to be greater than 20, okay, if you just want to make it positive, right, zero or more, right, you could just add unsigned here. All right, and then you wouldn't need the check. All right, so this is going to say not only does it have to be positive, it has to be greater than 20. And then uh, let's see uh, one more example of this thing. I'll add a note column here, and uh, we'll just be a variable character and say 10. Okay, and for this one, I'm going to say that, okay, it cannot be null, and I'm going to set a default. All right, so the default, I'll just say it's eeny. And then my constraint, and make the note and then I'll just give it a, a list here all right let's try that okay and then if we want to describe it okay there it is and then let's just try out our constraints all right so I'm going to insert all right, I'm just going to check the price here. And let's let's go under 20 there and see what happens. Okay, so it's violated. The check one is violated there. All right, uh, it has to be greater than 20, so let's try 21. Okay, that worked. And then let's just see, select star from test here. All right, and you can see that, all right, yep, the auto increment worked, uh, the default value worked here, all right, and then the price is the only data that we really put in there. All right, and then, yeah, if you want to just check, uh, you will not be able to input anything that is not in eeny, meeny, miny, or mo. All right, let me add a, a sort of a little bit different data validation here. All right, so I'm going to alter the table test here, and we're going to add a column. All right, and the column I'm going to add, uh, I'll, I'll add a stooge. 
All right, and uh, when we add a column, we have to give it a data type. And then this is kind of a backdoor way into data validation. I can, if I know the list of possible values going in, I can just use this enum data type. And it will also allow me to sort in this order, which is kind of neat. All right, so mo curly, of course, these are the stooges, right? And then uh, we'll run that. Okay, we'll make sure that the description is what we expected to be. There they are, and uh, it has to be one of these, uh, and it's actually going to be sorted in this order, so it's it's pretty much reverse alphabetical. So if I get enough, enough data in there, uh, that's how um, MySQL would sort it as well. Let's just try this. We'll insert into test, all right, and then it's going to be the stooge. Okay, so obviously we've violated that, all right, and then okay, a mo will work, all right, and then one more time here. There's our new data. Uh, let's see how to remove a column. Okay, so once again, it's an alter table, and it's going to be the test table, and then it's simply drop, and I'll get rid of the stooge. Okay, we run out of scribe. All right, and then, yep, that column is gone. All right, and just kind of a side note, if you wanted to change or remove the primary key from the table, right, we should be able to just use an alter table, right, and then something like drop primary key. Okay, but uh, it doesn't let you do that because uh, one of the rules the database engine enforces is that uh, only primary keys can be auto increment data type. All right, and so this, yep, it means that only one column per table auto increment. So if I want to do this, first I have to uh, modify the data type there and then I can drop the primary key. All right, so we wouldn't be dropping the column. If you want to just drop the column, you drop the column, uh, but then you lose all the data. If you want to keep the data, but you don't want it to be the primary key anymore, right? We could alter the table. All right, we'll modify ID, and then we'll just make it an integer. All right, and, and just so you can see that, yeah, I left off the test here, but trust me, it, it won't work here either. Okay, so it still doesn't work even though the syntax is correct. Here I modify it, I made it a, an integer, and then, okay, now I can drop the primary key. So the data is still there, right, but it's no longer the primary key. And then finally, how do you delete a table? All right, that's just going to be drop table. All right, so you could drop the whole database this way. So drop database and then the name. I'll get rid of this test table. All right, and there's no verification here. So it just kind of happens. So kind of be careful dropping tables, dropping databases. There's no warning on that. All right, so hopefully that helps you get started modifying tables with MySQL.